بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters in Islam إن لله عبادا فطنا طلق الدنيا وخاف الفتنا نظروا فيها فلما رأوها ليست لحي مسكنا اتخذوها لجة واتخذوا صالح الأعمال فيها سفنا which means Allah subhanahu jalla fi ulah has intellectual slaves to Allah subhanahu jalla fi ulah they looked at this dunya, meaning the lower level, life. And when they looked at it, they knew it was not an eternal abode. So indeed, they took the righteous deeds in it as safety boats. Safety boats where, Akhi? To what coast are they heading? Where is the safety area? Indeed, it is none other than Jannah. الناس نيام إذا ماتوا انتبهوا وإذا انتبهوا ندموا ولن ينفع الندم بعد العدم Indeed people are in a state of slumber heedlessness after they die they become alert they're awakened and if they do so they regret they become remorse and indeed, remorse will not come in your aid after it's too late, meaning after you die. So let us start at the end, meaning the end of your life or the day of judgment. So to set the record straight, once we, till, once we go there, we understand now what blessings we have between our hands. So we do not let it slip through your fingers. On Judgment Day, people will be given choices. They'll be asked questions. And indeed it's mentioned in the Quran. When somebody dies, you say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi raji'oon. When among the righteous scholars says, do you understand what you just said? Do you know the meaning and the connotation of inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon? We come from Allah and unto Him we are going to return. We are going to be resurrected. He says the meaning of it. But do you know the bigger picture? What's behind what you just said? He says, please teach me. He says, if you know for sure that you come from Allah and unto Him you are going to resurrect, then know for sure that you will be standing in front of Allah. And if you know for sure that you will stand in front of Allah, then know for sure that you will be asked questions. And if you know for sure that you will be asked questions, then you better prepare the answer for the questions. So have you prepared the answers for the questions? What questions? There are four to be specific, but that's not what I'm after today. I'm after one question, أخي and أختي. What question is that? The question is, ما سلككم في سقر? What brought you here to such a terrible place? سقر. It is even beneath Jahannam, which is hotter than Jahannam. The lightest fire in the lightest fire is 70, 000, 70 times hotter than the hottest fire on the face of the earth. So that is even hotter than that. The question is posed, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ What are you doing here? What brought you here? What is the answer? Number one on the list, قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُوا مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ They said, we were not among those who prayed. So let us talk about the second type of conversation with Allah subhanahu jalla fi ulah. Indeed, some of the scholars will tell you if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to listen to you, or if you want to speak to Allah, pray. If you want to listen to Allah, listen to the Quran. So now, akhi and ukhti, we already know the answer. If you pray, what happens? And if you don't pray, what happens? So some of us will procrastinate. Sawfa atub. After I reach 40, after I perform Hajj, after I get married. You're riding the waves of false hopes. 
Imagine yourself standing in front of Allah subhanahu jalla fi ula when he asks you questions. Abdi lima lam tusalli? My slave, why did you not pray? What excuse will you do? What will you say? Where will you run? Where will you hide? I was rich, I was poor, I was good looking, places to go, things to do, people to see. La wallahi. Imagine that some of us are worse than shaitan. Subhanallah. How could you be worse than shaitan? Is it possible for you actually to be called worse than shaitan? I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. No need for introduction. You know who is worse than shaitan? The one that does not pray. Because أمر الشيطان ليسجد لآدم فأبى وأمر ابن آدم ليسجد لله فأبى فأيهما أسوأ الذي أمر أن يسجد لآدم فأبى أم الذي أمر أن يسجد لله فأبى which one is worse? Shaitan was commanded to bow down in respect to Adam. And the children of Adam was commanded to bow down to Allah Jalla fi ula, and they refused. Which one is worse? The one that was commanded to bow down to Adam and he refused? Or the one that was commanded to bow down to Allah and refused? Subhanallah. <coughs> Imagine yourself on Judgment Day, Akhi and Ukhti where everyone will prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula when Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula comes to start judgment in a way befitting His Majesty. يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقُ وَيُدْعُونَ إِلِ السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ When Allah comes befitting His Majesty and they will prostrate they will be asked to prostrate and they will not be able to. So if you prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula, in this dunya you would be able to prostrate to Allah on the, in the hereafter. If you did not prostrate to Allah here, you will not be given that glory or the chance to prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. So what's holding you back? What are you waiting for? Invitation, a special one? It's been given over 1400 years ago, ya akhi. Wa aqimu salah wa atu zakah. Establish prayer. Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula said that. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, wa ju'ilat qurrata ayni fi salah. The apple of the eye. The pleasure in this dunya was made in the salah. So are we saying, arihna minha or arihna biha? Did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, let's get rid of it, let's finish it. Quickly, I have to go. I'm a busy man. Time is money, akhi. Let me get out of here. Wallahi, he said, arihna biha ya Bilal. By Allah, he says, oh, oh Bilal, radiallahu anhu an sahaba di ajma'een. He says, give us comfort in the prayer. Soothe our soul, give us tranquility, let us get us out of these distractions of life, the hardship, the turmoils, the stress and tension and the pressure in this life. Let us talk to Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula in our prayer. You understand that Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu an Ali bayt al athar he used to actually shake, he used to quiver. When he used to make wudu, when he was asked, why do you tremble, O Ali radiallahu an, when you're actually making wudu, why do you shake? He says, Atadri ba'da qalil aqif amama man? Have you any idea after a few minutes I will be standing in front of whom? So some of the righteous scholars were actually asked, how do you attain khushu'a? Because we hear, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Indeed, true success and winning with the true believers. In what way, akhi and ukhti? 
to win 649 or the lotto or la wallahi. Is the true winning, he says, when you attain khushu' in your prayer. So he asked him, how do you attain khushu' when most of us solve our worldly affairs and problems in the prayer? I remember things in the prayer. I have my shopping list in the prayer. I remember what my wife told me to do. My son needs this and my that. Most of us solve our problems in the prayer, but the worldly affairs. So he says, how do you attain khushu'? How do you see a man that is standing right here amongst in this dunya, but his heart, mu'allakum billah. His heart is hung with Allah. He's here, his feet are touching the earth, but the, his heart is touching the heavens. He's not amongst us physically here. Spiritually, he's not here. He's somewhere else. He's with Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. How do you attain this? How do you taste the beauty? What kind of price do you have to pay to be able to taste this beauty of Iman? He said, when you say Allahu Akbar, you mean it. So let me call you bluff now. It's a test that is given to all of us. You hear the call of the Adhan. Most of us have it on your watch, your iPhone. You even have it on your computer. Somehow you know when you hear it everywhere, no matter where you go in the world, you will hear Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. But what will you do then, Akhi? That is the test, that's the question. When you hear these words, what do you do? Of course, Shaitan will come and tell you, listen, you're cheering for your own country. That cricket game is very important. You're watching this Bollywood movie and this girl loves this guy and the father is the villain. They do not want to get married so they have to run. Elope girl, it's so romantic. You go girl. And the, you end up cheering for them. Something away, your remote is in the hand or the phone in your hand. Something is preoccupying you. Something is there. But some of us are smart enough to know about a Sahabi Jalil, that he had an axe in his hand. And he, when he was going down to strike, to chop the wood, he heard Allahu Akbar. What did he do? And that's the first lesson we are going to learn tonight, inshaAllah. You cannot walk out of this place the same way that you came here, Akhi and Ukhti. You have to change. Ilm and Amal, that's what we preach in Mercy Mission. Knowledge and action. You learn something, you act upon it. It becomes hujja laka la alayk. Becomes a plea for you, not against you. So that Sahabi radiallahu an, as soon as he had the strike onwards down, he let go. From now on, akhi, as soon as you hear the word Allahu Akbar, you let go whatever it is that you have in your hand. Because if you don't, فَإِنَّكَ تَقُولْ بِلِسَانِ الْحَالِ اللَّهُ لَيْسَ أَكْبَرُ because if you don't, you're actually saying with your actions and deeds and your behavior, Allah is not greater. That movie is greater. That match is greater. Could you imagine? Subhanallah. So he said, the Sahabi said, لا بورك في طرقة نودي عليها الصلاة. That strike is not blessed. When you hear Allahu Akbar, you're doing something else. What is greater than Allah? Who is more important than Allah? If you want to know where you stand with Allah, where does Allah stand with you, Akhi? Does He come first or does He come manana? Oh, when I have time, I'm busy. From now on, you hear Allahu Akbar, nothing is greater than Allah. So He says, How you attain khushu' is when you say Allahu Akbar, you mean it. And if you listen to the adhan, it will give you the answer. The only thing that is repeated four times is Allahu Akbar. It's telling you Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar than whom? Than your boss, than your job, than your business, than your wealth, than your health, than your spouse, your children, than anything else. Allahu Akbar. They repeat it four times. And if you don't hear it, listen to what's coming after that. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Really? Do you really testify and declare that there is no God except Allah? No deity deserving to be worshipped except Allah? So why are you worshipping the dollars and the pounds? Why are you worshipping your boss instead of worshipping Allah? 
Who has the keys for heaven and hell? Who means more to you? Who will you need more? Who will come in your aid? Who's in control of your destiny? You want to run away so fast, but you've forgotten that you want to run away so fast from the prayer so you can get the job or get the risk or get whatever it is that you have to get. And you've forgotten that the one that you're leaving is the one that has control of getting you the job or getting you the risk. So how could you leave somebody that is actually the one that is in charge of your own worldly affairs? So be smart, Akhi and Ukhti. So from now on, when you say Allahu Akbar, mean it. You leave this worldly affairs like you left your shoes outside, that's where it belongs. Beneath that soul. You left your shoes outside, that's where the life and your worldly affairs belongs outside this masjid. Beneath your shoes, that's where it belongs. Dunya, meaning the lower level. And if you don't hear Allahu Akbar, or Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, you will say Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah Is this the ummah of Rasulullah? Could it be possible that you actually declare that Muhammad is my messenger? And you're actually staying away from his sunnah? How could that be possible? If you haven't even heard, he tells you straight, bluntly, Hayy ala salah, come to prayer. If nothing is working, if you cannot decipher these hieroglyphics, if you cannot read between the lines, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, there's a caller calling you, come, hayy ala salah. If that doesn't work for you, you want another success, he's hayy ala al-falah. Come to the true success in this life and the hereafter. He reminds you again before it's finished, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. So the first thing on his list it says, when you say Allahu Akbar, mean it. Mean it, ya akhi. And then he says, as if you see the Kaaba. When you say Allahu Akbar, as if you see the Kaaba. Nothing is distracting you, that's it. And remember your sins and they hover over you as if they're going to destroy you. You have no other chance except this prayer to ask Allah to forgive all of these sins. And he said, when you read the Fatiha, read it like it's meant to be. When you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, do you know there is a reply? You know who you're talking to? Why are you thanking Allah for? Have you pondered and reflected about that even now? Vision, just the blessing of the vision. Can I ask you brothers and sisters if you can hear me, do me one favor. Close your eyes for a second. Let's close our eyes just for a few seconds. Keep closing your eyes and listen. Imagine your whole life, you cannot see a thing, just like now. You cannot differentiate between light and darkness. You cannot differentiate between colors. You don't know if it's night or day. You don't know who's in front of you. You don't know if anything is beautiful or not. Ya ummi ma shaklu sama wa ma dhiya wa ma al-qamar bi jamaliha tatahaddathoon wa la ara minha athar. Oh my mother, what is this light that you're talking about? What is that moon that you're talking about? You speak of its beauty, but I see none of it. Is this dunya darkness upon layers of darkness? Now open your eyes, Akhi, and be honest with yourself. What's like? What's like? What was those seconds like? What's your life like without the vision? So are we going to use the vision now in something else except that? Look forward to Allah. When we're all alone, are we going to disobey Allah? So you say, Alhamdulillah, just for that vision and everything else. Wa in ta'uddu ni'mat Allah. Ni'mah, singular. He did say ni'am. He did not go plural, he said he went singular. Just one ni'mah, you will not be able to count it. You cannot comprehend it. It's not, you cannot comprehend the whole thing. You cannot count for. 
So when you speak, when you recite the Quran, as uh, a man came to uh, Abu Hanifa al-Nu'man rahmatullahi alayhi, he says, I read the Quran, I finished it in three days. He says, go back and read it like I'm listening to you. He says, it took me three weeks. He says, go back and read it like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is listening to you. He says, it took me three months. He says, go back and read it like Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula is listening to you. He says, I could not get over the Fatiha. So read the Fatiha like Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula is listening to you. When you bow down, you bow down to only to Allah, no longer to a human being anymore. You say, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. Mean it. We don't buckle or bow down to anybody else. When you say, Sami Allah liman hamida, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears you. No matter what language you speak, what part of the world, what part of the day, no matter what you ask for, everybody has everything else that they ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears different things from different people, different times, different places, different languages. You say, Ya Rabbi, says, Labbayka abdi. And so much to share. When you're standing, when you're prostrating, you remember, Minha Khalaknakum, Wafiha Nuridukum, Waminha Nukhurijukum Taratan Ukhra. From this we created you. In it we are going to return you, and from it we are going to resurrect you. Just in case you think that you're the hottest thing on the face of the earth. Walk in humility. So remember this is where you come from and this is where you're going back to. So humble yourself down, Nahi. And again, remember that you're standing, he says, as if you're standing on that sirat, on this path, the bridge, beneath it is the hellfire, and you can now fall in it any time. And this is your last prey, because the angel of death is right behind you with an arrow pointed to your back. He can let go that arrow any time and take your soul. So if you know for sure that this is your last prayer, how will you pray it? Above all, Allah subhanahu jalla fi ula watches over you. Could you imagine? That's what we should be doing with our prayers anymore. Abu Hanif al Nu'man was asked the same question, Rahmatullah Ali. He says, How do you attain khushu'a? He says, I want you to think that you're in a dark, windy, cold night. You're in the middle of the ocean. And you're in a boat. The boat got destroyed. Now you cannot swim. You're fighting for your own life. The only thing you have is a piece of floating wood. You hold on to it for your dear life. He says you hold on to your prayer like you're holding on to that piece of wood for your dear life. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the prayer in itself, Akhi, is your key. Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula will ask you about it first. If it is accepted, Allah will accept everything else. If it's not accepted, Allah will not accept anything else. I want you to imagine a friend of yours works in the stock market. He tells you, listen man, I have some inside information that there's a stock is gonna skyrocket. I'll call you. What will you do then? Would you miss this call? Will you miss that call from your friend? Of course not. You'll make sure you don't miss that call. He says, that friend is the mu'adhin. The phone call is the adhan. The stock is your salah. If I tell you for sure, if you come to the masjid to pray fajr in jama'ah, I will give you a hundred pounds. Will you miss it? No, you won't. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising you heavens and the earth, ya akhi. For every step you come forward, one good deed is uh, written, one bad deed is erased. You're in the protection of Allah. As if you prayed staying up half of the night. 
And if you pray jama'ah in Isha, as if you stayed up, pray the half of the night. So if you pray jama'ah in Isha, and pray jama'ah in Fajr, as if you stayed up all night to pray. And you will be giving illuminated light. Bashir al Masha'in for Zulam bin Nur al-Tam Yawm al Qiyamah. Give those who walk in darkness to the Masajid with the illuminating guiding light on Judgment Day. What are you waiting for? Now, let's finish where we started. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at his last breath while he was dying and the scholars would tell you when you're dying you say the most important things to you he says as-salah as-salah wa ma malakat aymanukum prayer prayer on whatever your right hand possesses there's no success in this life or the hereafter with no prayers So how are you doing, Akhi and Ukhti, on your prayers? I haven't been praying for a long time. Man, I'm doomed. I'm toast. I might as well just give up, right? La wallahi. You heard the Shaykh, Hafizahullah. Ya qul ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah. So unto my slaves, those who exceeded the boundaries of disobedience. They were extravagant and not active disobedience. Never despair of Allah's mercy. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. And what's better than that, even in Surah Al-Furqan, إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّ اللَّهِ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ So I will leave you with a, an action. I will leave you with a solution. So if you haven't been praying, The easier opinion among the two is you make tawbah. You take a shower, make ghusl with the niyyah of tawbah. Because some of the opinions is if you don't pray, you're not a Muslim. You want to take a chance on judgment day to see who is the scholar or the madhab or the school of thought that uh, if you pray, you're not a Muslim or not. I know there's a debate about it. I'm not, it's not my topic for now. But can you imagine? So take a ghusl, take a shower with the niyyah of tawbah. And make two rak'at tawbah. And start fresh. You don't have to make up all these years. You don't have to make up all the sunan. You don't have to make up all the qiyam. All of that because it's a trick of shaitan. Because if you're smoking, can I ask you to run a marathon? No. It's actually the deterrent. Shaitan is using that trick against you. It's called tusab bil futur. You can't keep it up. So first he said, the scholars say, pray only the obligatory prayers. First, don't make up anything. And the hadith is there, sahih. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, has he fulfilled his, uh, is he completed his salah? He says, no, give me that sunnah after that to complete it. So first, he doesn't say complete with another fard. It says with the sunnah after, inshaAllah. So first thing you want to do is make sure you at least do the faraid prayer, the five obligatory prayers first. Till you really sit fast and strong, then you can do the sunnah after that. Add, akhi. Slowly, inshaAllah. So you're not too far out, ya akhi. Because these verses are beautiful. Illa except before all these acts of sins under Ibadur Rahman. Except those who repent. Believe and do righteous deeds. What if I do, Ya Allah? Fa'ulaika, fa'at-ta'qib, fa'ulaika, right away. Those Allah will transform their evil deeds into good deeds. That's the glad tiding I will leave you with. And why are they in order, Akhi? They're not haphazard. They're there for a reason. Illa man taba, except you repent first, because inna tawbah tu'ina ka al iman, wal iman daliluhu al amal. Tawbah will aid you into increase your iman, and the proof of your iman is your actions and deeds. So, what are you waiting for? Alam yain lil ladina amanu an taqsha kulubhum li dhikr Allah. Isn't it time for those who believe to come back and their heart tremble to come to remember Allah? Ana ya Rabb, it is time wallahi. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who listen to speech and follow the best of it. Wa akhir da'wam, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallam ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'in. Jazakumullah khayran wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.